What's up guys, welcome back. This is part 9 of the Aryan series. Really? Part 9? Christ. And in this video we're going to take another look at how to achieve the brassy non-metallic metal, but this time we'll do it on a surface with a higher level of complexity and additionally use an advanced texturing technique in order to get a deeper, more enhanced effect. To start off we'll begin with a black undercoat and then we'll make a mix of XV88 and black which we'll use as our base colour. Now when I'm looking at the bracer itself, even though it's a single piece, I split it up into two separate sections. This outside rim here we'll treat as a single flat band. We're not going to worry too much about all the little curves on the surface, we're just breaking it down into its simplest form, which is a long thin flat section. The rounded part in the middle of the bracer we'll treat as a cylinder. Now because we're treating these two as distinct shapes, we're going to leave a thin black outline around the outside of the central cylinder integral area. So this is more due to the scale that we're working with than anything else. As the model is so small we need that black there so that the viewer can actually see what's going on. On a larger scale I would just paint the whole thing with the dark brown and forget about the outline in the middle. So once that colour is blocked in we will switch to using some XV88 thinned down slightly with some water and just like we did on the sword we'll begin to map out where we want our highlights to be. So on the outside edge I'm going to place my highlights fairly randomly and the only thing I'm really focused on is making sure that I leave a dark area between each highlight and I'm going to use the thin consistency of the paint to create a transition by pushing it over the surface in the direction of my highlight. And I do this over a few layers until the place where I want the brightest part of my highlight is opaque. It doesn't so much matter where you're placing the highlights on this outside edge, just make sure that they're fairly well spaced out. On the central part remember we're treating it like a cylinder so our highlight is going to go along the length of the surface. To keep things interesting I'm going to do two highlights, one main highlight and a secondary bounce highlight. Check out my video on non-metallic metal highlight placements to find out more about that. Essentially it's simulating light bouncing over a surface. So you can see that our main highlight on the top side of the bracer is going to be slightly bigger than our secondary highlight. Once we've mapped that in we can add some initial texturing by painting on lines that go across the width of the bracer, painting them over those two main guide marks. This helps to blend out the edges of the paint while reinforcing the colour so that it's more opaque. The texture lines will also help to create noise on the surface which is going to give us an almost shimmery quality as we add more highlights. I find that this really helps in selling the illusion of a metallic surface. You can do this a few times until you're happy that the colour is nice and solid along the highlight. Don't worry so much if you think it looks a bit messy at this stage. This process is all about refining as you go, so your initial colour is generally going to look a bit shitty to be honest. Alright so once you've done that we'll move on to using some Vallejo Japanese uniform, thin down slightly with some water and we'll apply another round of highlights using the paint from the previous step as a guide. So again you want to push the paint into position. When you're doing this try to visualise where you want your highlight to go and then start your brush stroke a little bit back from that point and push the brush over the surface stopping when you reach your target.
On the middle section, we'll continue painting on the little thin texture lines over the highlight. I'll mark the brightest part of the highlight with a guideline, just so that it's easier to get the colour nice and bright. Try to use the very tip of the brush for this, applying as little pressure as possible in order to keep the lines fine. If you press down, the point is going to flare out and you'll end up with quite big wide brush marks, and that's not what you want here, so try to use a light touch. And then I'll apply those texture lines over a few layers until the colour is well defined. And we'll do the same idea on the secondary highlight. You can allow your lines to go over onto the dark area in the middle, but don't totally cover that area or you'll lose your shadow and that will kill the effect because you'll no longer have the strong contrast between the highlight and the shadow. Next we'll add some white sands into the Japanese uniform to lighten it and we'll apply another round of highlights. And I'll try not to cover up the previous highlights by making these slightly smaller than before. Mix some more white sands in there and we'll repeat the last step, making our highlight much smaller this time. The highlights on the middle of the bracers are really just dots at this stage. But I will try and throw in the occasional small line to help break up the surface a little. If the highlights get too uniform then you can lose the effect somewhat so it's better to let some randomness creep in. I find you get a better result that way. Then the last step is to use white sands on its own and apply very small final highlights. Just applying it as little dots. Usually what I do is target all the brightest spots first, then I'll go back and apply tiny little highlights at the darkest areas, especially around the edge of the elements. It's rare that I'll paint a solid line on the edge when I'm doing non-metallic metal. I find you get a better effect painting the edges with random little dots to get a sparkly effect.
Alright, so that's how you use texturing to get a more convincing non-metallic metal effect. I hope you enjoyed the process. I think the final result ended up looking really good. You can see how the texture adds quite a lot to the overall effect. Give that a go, you might surprise yourself. If you find this content helpful and you're interested in supporting its creation, you can do so by signing up to my Patreon feed for as little as $1 a month. Patrons get access to a private Discord server where you can get feedback on your work or just hang out and chat. You also get other benefits including early access to videos, access to videos not available on YouTube, in-depth PDF guides, and occasionally the inclusion of your own work in videos like this one. If that's something you're interested in, click the Patreon link on screen to sign up now and I'll see you on the Discord. Thanks again. Bye for now.